RT TV is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy today at expressvpn.com slash RTTV. Big thank you to ExpressVPN for sponsoring RTTV and letting us talk with you guys just like we're doing today. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Rooster Teeth Podcast. <laughs> I'm Gus. I'm Gavin. I'm James. And I'm Barbara and <laughs> wow. Gavin. And hey, I'm Gus. Me. Gus, did you forget little... your own Hold name? On. Why was that little girl so sad? Why did I forget my name? What's my name? You just took uh, forever to say who you were. I was waiting for the lower third to clear. That way we had oh. a clean cut for the for the final version of this product. Oh. I don't know if you know that. It's called professionalism. No, I don't. What? He's, look, look who you're talking to and <laughs> how that person is presenting themselves. <laughs> how, how old is that photo? Uh, uh, I don't know, but it does remind me of the way uh, someone tonight looks. Me? <laughs> Whoa. Whoa! Oh my god! I'm back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a terrible beard accident? What happened? It fell off. It fell off. It happened. Flew right off. I hear if you masturbate too much, your beard falls off. <laughs> <laughs> it looks good. How do you feel? Uh, it was weird. Last night, I felt the heat from my chest against my neck and chin. For the first time. <laughs> also, my kitten doesn't know who the hell I am. <laughs> would your cat hide in your beard before? Like it would crawl up in there and just like take a nap and mm -hmm. yeah, he would sleep. like uh, like rest. He would make bis biscuits in them and and all that. Well, my it. question: What did you do with the birds, the baby birds? Did you find them a new home? I threw up in their mouth. Oh, okay. So they're just being raised elsewhere, not in your beard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, chat, great. chat is going crazy, by the way. People. Uh... <laughs> Can't believe your your new look. <laughs> should we should get some thumbs up or thumbs down? What people think? Thumbs up, big thumbs or up in chat. Thumbs middle. It was just too <laughs> long to the point where it was like twice the size of a mask. Like I could wear two masks and fully mm. cover it all, or I could Did... fold it sort of into its own mask. But I just got damn sick of it. It's probably thick too. So like just the density of it all was probably too much to handle. Yeah. Did you finally just end up getting rejected from ZZ Top? So you're like, oh, fuck it, there's no point in keeping it. <laughs> that, that was the final straw, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, welcome back, Gavin. It's good to have. It's good to see you again. It's good to recognize the person I'm uh, I'm staring at every week <laughs> and talking to. I had I did something. Let me, I, I did something at my house over the weekend that made me think about you, Gavin. Um, I was I have some planners outside of my house and the. Uh, the, the plants that had been in them had died. So I was like, all right, I need to like dig them out and figure out what's going on in there and put some new plants in. Well, I went out there and you'll see why I'll think of, I was thinking about you in just a minute. I went out there and I started digging up the planters. They're pretty big. And I realized that I guess the reason the plants had died is they weren't draining water anymore. So this giant planter was filled with this really oh. goopy, thick mud. And the water had probably been standing in there for several weeks, if not a couple of months at this point. So when I started digging it out, it smelled like <laughs> either open sewer or hot garbage. And <laughs> I just started gagging. It was like one of the worst smells I've ever smelled in my life. Just the stagnant water in the, this goopy black and it's mud all hot sludge. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was like 100 degrees outside while I was doing it. And I was just like <laughs> scooping it out and like, Trying not to breathe it in, or like oh. whoop, like gagging as I'm digging out <laughs> these giant planters, Dude, and no. it's it's still like it's still out there. Like I had to, I, I I took all of the dirt out to try to get it to like dry <laughs> in my front yard, and it's still wet. It's still mud out there. <laughs> it's been out there for like two days now, and it's just like black, sopping wet mud. It's disgusting. It's crazy what standing water will do. I also, I love that uh, you associate a like, yeah. stinking, gammy mess that makes you <laughs> gag with me. Like, That's course. what I was waiting for, the connection there, yeah. 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 No, Gavin, uh, Gavin has a, a very sensitive gag reflex, and I figure yeah. if you were anywhere near mm. me while that was happening, you probably would have thrown He's out. the go-to for when stuff like that happens, of what you think about. <laughs> mm -hmm. for... well, when I lived... And... Go ahead. I was going to... I had another trash story, which is not, definitely not equally as gross, but... <laughs> I don't know who the fuck does this, and I want to find this motherfucker and ask them why they did it, because it was so mean. But our trash got emptied last week, and then it rained here. And because the trash got emptied before we could take our bins back, the bin filled with water. And I guess someone later that day 
was walking their dog and decided to bag up their shit and put it in our empty water-filled trash can. Ooh. So there was just shit floating in water in a hot <laughs> garbage can that we yeah. had already had emptied from the trash oh. people. So now we don't know what to do with this shit. <laughs> we just have a bag of shit. And it's we also missed garbage this week. It's just been a catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. You, you just make a delicious cocktail out of the water, then you put the the shit back in there. How no, do you what? how do you feel about a a passerby leaving their dog poop in your trash? Are are you guys protective I, of your trash? I'm fine with it. I'm okay with it if the trash has not been collected yet. If it's literally an hour after the trash was collected and you're putting your dog shit in my now empty mm-hmm. clean trash bin, then I have a problem mm-hmm. with it. Yeah, but how I've do got, they know if it's been it's taken? It's just the or not? first. They're well, opening it's, it to it's gonna be open away. yeah it's gonna i mean uh, we don't we don't have trash bins but like like when when i walk benson or whatever like uh, there's a bunch of houses that do and generally when the trash has come it's an open bin because the machine lifts it up and then slams it down and it's just like an open empty bin but that's the only time that you can do like the fadeaway jumper with it yeah so <laughs> i would i'm feel totally weird. fine with it because i don't want people leaving their dog shit i'm fine with any time it doesn't matter if my mm-hmm. garbage has just been picked up or not <laughs> what so uh, you want that dog shit i would rather it be bagged up in my trash can rather than left in my yard i think it's well mm-hmm. it also depends on where your trash cans are like are yours always outside because we store ours in an indoor area where other things are uh, ours are we... always outside yeah okay yeah it's trevor's in chat too it was it's empty and full of water, and you're literally just throwing <laughs> yeah. your shit the, in there. Like, what? That's, yeah. that's fucked up. That's the extra fucked up part, the fact that it's filled with water. Because then you have to empty it. You can't just leave your trash can filled with mm-hmm. water. But you, right, because then like... it's like, if we dump it out, then the, the b- bag of poop is just right. on the floor. And now we're littering because we dumped yeah. our trash but, can out with some of the shit. But the surely most, the most time, the most frequently you've seen shit has been in water. It's true. Yeah, but then you yeah, normally you flush it. This you have to pick it back up off the ground and put it back in the trash can. It's, it's not even your shit. And it's, 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 it's someone dog else's dog. Shit. Right, it's, it's their responsibility dog. to take care of, and they just make I, it work for you. To exactly. me, you close the lid, you move on with your life. You just, <laughs> you just. That's just. That's what's the opposite of paying something forward. That's just. <laughs> I, I, you go. I am sorry. Maybe you put a note and you go. I'm really sorry to the trash collectors or whatever. And I go. I'm sorry. There's some water and then someone threw some shit in here. But I, I try to get as much out as possible. I, I don't know why bins seem to be fair game. Like that's my bin. That's the bin I pay for. Get it's get true. your little grubby hands off it. It's fine. Don't put shit it's in it. trash. Well, be- I, I, I would rather the trash be in the can than not in the can. What do you want? What do you want here? I think it's speaking, totally fine. Speaking well, as protective. one without a bin. Can I uh, speaking as <laughs> yeah, one please. without a bin? Like you don't always know that there's going to be a bin that you can return to as stupid as it sounds. Like we have a <laughs> dumpster that's outside of our building but sometimes it's unavailable. And so like honestly there are times where I'm panicking walking down the street with Benson's poop going like, how am I going to dispose of this? And then I'll see like half a mile down the road, there's a bin and then we have to divert to go to the bin because like there's not like a ton of public trash cans that I could just throw dog poop into. So I guess I like my issue is if you're walking your dog, you're likely nearby your residence. And if you're close enough, why not just have the poop and throw it out at your own trash can? Also, like it's not like we're the only house in a five mile radius like there's other houses there's other trash cans there's other trash bins and for some reason ours filled with but, water was the one that but they were you chose. the last to bring your bin in maybe that's why. i don't think so you, it was you like put an a target hour on your back you might be a lazy <laughs> bin bringer yeah, yeah yeah you're a lazy bin I, bringer i hey. do hate lazy bin bringers i get really <laughs> mad about that when i see people when it's like the next day and the bins are still out there it's like pick it up just take it in mm-hmm. what, what's your problem i keep having the same problem where about once every three months the bin truck will steal my bin, and then I don't have one <laughs> for a week. That, seem, that seems wrong. And I, I watch it on security <laughs> get lifted up by the machine and just dropped into the bin, into the big truck, and then they just drive off with it every time. And I got to call up, I, be like, can you, can I have my bin back? And they're like, yeah, I'll deliver you another one. You got to wait a week, so I got a week without a bin. Then it arrives, th- then it'll get nicked again. I'm sick of it. I, I need to chain fresh- them. It's a fresh bin, though. No, that it's must not be a fresh bin. Feeling. It's someone else's gammy old bin oh. who has yeah, died really or moved nuanced. or something. So you get like a, a more minging bin than you had before. This new one's got mm. sludge in so, it. 
I've had my bin the taken like old bin. about before as well, Gavin. <laughs> yeah, do you and, want my uh, poo bin? <laughs> <laughs> some uh like some of my neighbors uh where I live, like they we they all have each other's they we can contact each other. I don't want to get into the specifics, but a couple of weeks ago one of my neighbors contacted like a group of us that live in this area and was like, Hey, my trash can's missing after trash day. Does anyone have it? And in my mind, I'm like, you idiot. It probably just got taken by the truck. And then like three minutes later, one of my other neighbors replied like, Oh yeah, we've got it. Uh, the, the trash people left it at our place. Like who the, who the, the fuck, fuck? <laughs> had an extra bin and was like, this is fine. I'm going to keep it. Who <laughs> Like they don't, they don't return it or just they, well, why did they just leave it out on the street? Why did they, <laughs> they're like, Oh, I guess I have an extra bin now. I'm going to take it in with my regular trash. Like and then, <laughs> I was, I was so baffled at the thought process here. Yeah. I if, if how... I had an extra one, I would not wheel it in. Sorry. No. Yeah. No, it's okay. I interrupted you on that one. Um, <laughs> this happened. I, I've had a lot of garbage bin and recycle bin issues. Uh, one of which somehow our neighbor and us, our recycle bins got completely swapped at one point. Like I brought it in and realized it had like his address on it and not ours. And I was like, oh, how'd that happen? The problem is our neighbor throws out just everything not washed out, not rinsed out, like everything just into the bin, like empty beer bottles, empty containers and stuff like that. So it fucking reeks. This is usually about recycling? Yeah. Mm. The recycling bin. It's just full of gammy food and yeah. old beer and just, it just <laughs> it's <laughs> terrible. And we had to like figure out how to heist our bin back. <laughs> like do we wait until they're both out, come out right after the recycle truck comes and swap them again? Because otherwise, it's such an awkward conversation. This is the same neighbor, by the way, who has the dog piss in their uh, backyard. It's all I, making sense now. Yeah. This, this is, is what this it's is like to be an adult. Yeah. I it, well, I was going to say, never has it been more obvious that times are tough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was. Uh, you, you were talking about walking Benson, and we talked about... Yeah uh bending dog poo earlier i was uh before we started the podcast i was out i was uh, i had to let my dogs out and i was watching them and you let them out I was, yeah I, I let the dogs out okay ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. um and i was watching oswald and oswald pooped and i was started wondering i was like he oswald poops he's a tiny dog he poops a lot and i started wondering i was like does he poop more than 50 percent of the time that i take him out then i started thinking I should keep a spreadsheet and I should keep track of <laughs> how often he poops and what time of day he poops. And then I started thinking I should make shit stats for him. I should have a little scale outside so that I can weigh how much he shits in a week. And I could figure out, cause I started wondering, does he shit more than his body weight in a week? Oh, that's and, interesting. Like how many, how long it takes for him to shit his entire weight. Right. So it's like, I want to buy a scale now so that I can weigh the dog bags after I pick up after him and I can see how long does it take him to shit his own body weight, which well, is like 13 pounds. You need to add another statistic, which is how much weight he consumes. Oh, that's true. Mm, you need to see wow. in versus out, right? Well, you Because I know shit is mostly blood, right? <laughs> <Is that the laughs> Isn't that the truth? Like your shit is mostly like blood? It's is like, it? It's like dead cells, yeah. It's, that, yeah, it's uh, like we're just doing need this anymore. But I feel like that information, while great, you know I'm a big proponent of shit stats, been going on about it for years. However, we need a benchmark, and you need to be also measuring your own shit so that we know how dogs compare to humans in yeah. terms of shitting themselves. I feel like humans weight. are so inconsistent, though, with their shit. Like, some, yeah. some people shit once or three times a day. Some people shit once every three days. You know, it's there's mm. no... but. I would argue if we looked at pure volume, it works out the same. Mm. Pure volume. Similarly, I would say similarly, like it works out the same. So you may be like, I, well, one of those people that like, I use the bathroom three times a day. James and the <laughs> other person who goes once a month, that's it. I mean, I fill the bowl, but once a month. Fucking master um, shit. <laughs> but I think if you compared the stats, you would see that the proportions are the same. Mm. Well, now we need to figure it out. People we People aren't just, just manifesting science more on our poop. Side. Yeah. But you also, I think you, you also have to measure, like you were talking about the in versus out. Like how is, are mm -hmm. certain bodies more efficient than other bodies at processing uh, the food that's taken in? Yeah, yeah. But then I guess you're also talking about like, is it dead cells that are being expunged? Are some bodies shedding more cells than other bodies? See, this is what we need spreadsheets for. And, we need, and, a, yeah. we need, I need a good toilet. There's something I need to understand is how you could take a shit sometimes so big that you wonder how it fit 
in your body, but not only that, but how it actually came out of your butthole, which is like that small. No, and how it that ain't. works. <laughs> no, <it ain't. laughs> I think uh, this, someone in chat who is this, oh RT broadcast official just called it shit shit statistics. It's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it's, it's, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna lay my claim and say that the anus is arguably one of the most versatile, most important parts of the human body. I'm gonna go top three: brain. Yeah. Okay. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Anus. <laughs> oh, number two. Wow. Number, number two. two. Very good. And and number three <laughs> would probably be like the eye or something I, like, I like that. I like that you've listed the top three, like two being anus, but mouth mm -hmm. not on there. The the whole reason you need the <laughs> anus is because of your mouth. Well, be it's because there's so many other things that can easily bypass the mouth. The mouth isn't important for drinking. It's just a hole. Sure. So I guess like the stomach. Guys, yeah, I know you, you your butthole get... expands when you poo. I know that. I know it doesn't stay this small. Don't worry. I'm just. I'm Bobber shits how... through a metal rod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything comes out like when you're doing play doh. It's yeah. all spaghetti. And there's different attachments for different <laughs> like, spirals. Yeah. Oh, star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like what what is like the what is like the stretchal ratio of the anus? Like oh, at God. resting, <laughs> talking you know, you about like, this. You have like, yeah, like the resting it, pulse the... rate and oh. your exercise rate. Mm -hmm. Well, we know it can be trained. We know that. <laughs> yeah, but it's like the full. Is, is it like it is it like trained. a one to two? Like, does it double in width mm. or radius or diameter? It's a. I don't I'm, know. I'm getting all. I'm getting all confused over the term. Both, right? It could be either radius or diameter. I think it's got to at least double. Probably. Is it like what? What's that animal? Is it a mouse or something that could squeeze through a certain type, like certain size hole? Like that's, I don't know. I've like heard an, an octopus can open a yeah. jar in your anus. <laughs> yeah, from the inside out. <laughs> what are you? What do you mean you heard that? Where do you hear that? What have you been yeah. reading? Politico, well, I, I think I, it I was added right. The oh. Anus part. I'll be honest. <laughs> I was on Breitbart the other day, and there was a real great expose, expose about <laughs> yeah. anal-loving octopuses. Oh what was going God. on with octopuses? Octop octopodites? Oct octopusy? Aren't they both acceptable? O octopuses Octopi? and octopi? I think so. Octo octopu? Plural of octopus. It's like, oh. like that's that's the how we know we're in the modern age. It used to be things were very strict, and it took a lot of people rallying together to push something over. But now we're in the phase where it's like, well, technically it should be cactus cacti, but eh, it's fine. Cactuses. Who cares? Grammatically, cactuses? grammatically speaking, the plural for octopus is octopuses. As the Merriam-Webster dictionary points out, people use three different terms. However, octopi, octopuses, and octopodes. While octopi has become popular in modern usage, it's wrong. Okay. All right. It's but wrong. I like the dictionaries. The dictionary is like, you know, honestly, but who cares? Yeah, yeah, it's like <laughs> but you're the dictionary. You're the, you should be telling us. I, I have no dog in the fight. You're the dictionary. <laughs> this episode of the Received Podcast is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Uh, you need, when you use the bathroom, you always close the door behind you, right? You don't want random passerbys looking in on you. So why would you let people look in on you when you go online? Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like going to the bathroom and not closing the door. That's because internet service providers like Comcast, Verizon, uh, they know every single website you visit. Uh, what's worse is they can sell this information to ad companies and tech giants who will use your data to target you. ExpressVPN puts a stop to this. It creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet, so your online activity cannot be seen by anyone. As ExpressVPN on all my devices, it works on everything. Phones, laptops, routers. So everyone who shares your Wi-Fi can still be protected even if they don't have ExpressVPN. The best part is using ExpressVPN is as easy as closing the bathroom door. You fire up the app, click one button, and you're protected. That's why ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by CNET, Wired, The Verge, and countless others. So if you're like me, you believe your online activity is your business, secure yourself by visiting expressvpn.com slash rooster today. Uh, use our exclusive link at expressvpn.com slash rooster. You can get an extra three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash rooster. So, uh, so uh, I almost, I, well, my worst nightmare came true last night. Uh, what happened? You know, we're, we're pretty good about cleaning the house and making sure we don't let bugs in and like closing the doors when we open them right away and all that stuff. And we spray the house. Do you think most bugs come in the door? No, but I'm saying like... Oh. 
<laughs> if you know if you're opening the door to bring something in there might be stuff flying around that could come inside like especially wait. at night yeah at night sure um, um and so last night as we're just getting into bed trevor looks up and he goes oh god damn it and i was like what and i look up there's a massive fucking cockroach crawling over our ceiling it is it, it's got to be like that big at least it's fucking huge and How that's my worst ceiling? nightmare because those things are fast and they're big and hard to kill and crunchy and and disgusting. <laughs> how high was the ceiling, Barbara? Like, how far away was it? It's very, it we have very pool? high ceilings. Like, so even you can't if even get to it. Can't even stand on the bed to get to it. Like, it's very high up. So what'd you do um, about it? Did you throw a shoe? <laughs> so we were panicking. He's like, go grab a bowl from downstairs. Cause like, if we get it down, it's going to be fast and it's big. So we need a big bowl. And I was downstairs panicking and like, couldn't find one except a big, huge, heavy glass one, which was like, I don't want this being thrown all over the room trying to catch a cockroach. And so I was like, oh, what if I get the vacuum and we somehow get it on the floor somewhere and we vacuum it up because it can't get out of there. Right. And so I bring the vacuum in, give it to Trevor. Trevor's like, all right, we're going to try this. He takes his shirt, throws it at the ceiling. Somehow the cockroach perfectly comes down exactly where it was hit. Like usually if you hit a bug off the ceiling, who knows where it goes? It flies somewhere, right. it skitters across, whatever. It falls down. He grabs the vacuum scoops it up into the vacuum and we're like is it in there is it in there i don't know i don't see it and we're like freaking out i'm freaking out because i hate bugs and luckily we're like looking around the vacuum and i had just enough hair still in the vacuum that the hair wrapped around so quickly it strangled this thing to death oh, <laughs> oh my god it, it choked it out <laughs> it choked it out like immediately it was just like instantly dead wrapped in hair really tightly in the vacuum <laughs> and i was scared that this thing was somehow going to reanimate or come back to life so i got trevor to put a ziploc bag at the other end of the <laughs> vacuum and elastic band it around because <laughs> i was just i was wow. terrified it was gonna like crawl right back out of there and like rip open the plastic bag yeah just like, like double season it would be the one cockroach that's into like autoerotic asphyxiation it'd be like harder <laughs> i love it so I feel like the next vacuum. cockroach I see, I'm gonna, oh, I'm just gonna try and there? choke it out. I have it. It's in there. Oh, it's still in there. You probably can't see it too well. Oh, I see, I see it. it. Yeah, no, I see yeah. it. Yeah. But that cockroach went from "it's warm in here" to "I'm dying in the worst possible <laughs> way a cockroach could ever die." Because, like most it. cockroaches, their fate is generally "I exist," and then a foot hits them, and then they don't <laughs> exist anymore. Right. But in this case, it was like, "Oh my God, what's happening to me?" Where am I going? It's all dark. Oh, wait, there I can see. Something's <laughs> around me. It's getting tighter. I can't breathe. I didn't even realize cockroaches breathe. Please help me. <laughs> I, uh, I sent a picture to Eric of one I tried to take closer up, but it's still a little hard to see. I don't the, know if he wants to throw it Why did you go there. to the trouble of there it is. zip blocking the other end of the vacuum? Enhance. And then she, enhance. Viewed, she, viewed that, she viewed that as a threat. <laughs> Listen, man, it was it was like one in the morning. I was already really exhausted. And then the adrenaline was just running okay, through we, my we, veins. We get it. You don't have to keep zooming in on it. Stop. <laughs> no, Stop. I want to get closer. It's like the room that they keep the Hulk in on that Avengers <laughs> uh, big flying thing. You also, can see it's it's it, th two and four stop, stop. of its uh, six <laughs> arms or whatever were clasped together in prayer, <laughs> begging for a swift death, but it was he, not. Able he looks to like it. he died with his wrists tied together on his knees. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. Why are you still going? <laughs> Listen, the man. iPhone takes that's an incredible a photo. I was going to say that's that getting detailed. What a zoom! That's I fantastic. thought I didn't have much. Look at that. <laughs> Thanks, That's Harry. Great. We, we, we really appreciate it. But I know people in the chat are like, it seems like overkill. Uh, of course it is. I'm being overly <laughs> dramatic. This is just what we did. It was scary. I'm okay. terrified of these things. And right, it's it, dead now. It's gone. It's off the stream for everyone watching. I know we a lot of people were saying in chat that they're not looking at it. It's gone. Next it's time, not on the screen. If this happens again, hopefully it doesn't. For all cockroaches out there, hopefully it doesn't happen again um but if it does happen again just have Tre trevor dress up as a lady cockroach and then try and lure it to wherever you need it to go and then whisk it outside i will yeah, say strangle I... it with your bare hands <laughs> yeah, you'll be there with the you trip like wire that? and then uh, <laughs> uh i will say a cockroach having lungs and a windpipe <laughs> with it <choked. laughs> yeah agent 47 you have a new target after after he killed it though i don't think like we have a very 
I, I love Trevor more than anything in the world. I don't think I've ever loved him more than in that moment right then. <laughs> I'm just like, you did this for me. It's gone. I don't even have to think about it. You're so brave. He so, saved you. Gentlemen, if you uh, want to away to a lady's heart, just kill bucks for her. Well, I was going to say, Trevor hasn't slept a wink since this happened because of the trauma. <laughs> Every time he closes his eyes, he sees that cockroach praying. <laughs> <laughs> This episode of the Rooster Teeth Podcast is brought to you by Mint Mobile. Uh, I got my first cell phone with one of the big wireless providers years ago. And I honestly, you know, you hate your monthly bill. I hate my monthly bill ever since then. Uh, I discovered there's another option that could give me premium service I'm used to at a fraction of the cost. I could cut my wireless bill down to just 15 bucks a month and save hundreds of dollars by switching to Mint Mobile. For anyone out there who's looking to save without sacrificing service, switching to Mint Mobile is a no-brainer. Uh, for customers that hate their wireless bill, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month by going online only and eliminating th the traditional cost of retail. Mint Mobile can pass significant savings on to you. Uh, I enjoy their approach to wireless. It's just super upfront and honest. They even give you the tools like a coverage tracker that shows what coverage you're getting in your area before you buy. I was able to type in my address and see exactly the kind of coverage I had here. And every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text plus crazy fast 4G LTE. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan. Keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. And if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven day money back guarantee. Switch to Mint Mobile, get premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash rooster. That's mintmobile.com slash rooster. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash rooster. Oh, man. I, um, I, so I've been trying to find ways to kill time, you know, during quarantine. I'm sure we all have, right? Puzzles. And, well, but there's puzzles. But I feel like recently there was a craze where, you know, people were making sourdough bread, right? I feel like you always heard about that. People yeah. were making sourdough starters. That was like month bread. one and two, I think. Let mm -hmm. me tell you. Pickles are the new sourdough. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> You doing your own I, pickling? I am. Do you see them? They're over there. Can, can I get a white? So what you there. you bought yeah. some cucumbers and just put them in a jar of vinegar? I mean, that's all it is, right? So see, I don't know if you can see it. I, there's a label on it. It says uh, "Great Pickle Experiment Number One." Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I need a burp. It. You want to see if we hear it? Yep. I want to hear it. Oh, it didn't make any noise. Damn. So if you didn't don't burp anything. it, does it explode? Yes. That's awesome. Oh, it's stinky. Um, so you, the, the reason we started decided to do this was, was it yesterday or the day before? Maybe it was Saturday. Uh, I was looking for something to watch because, you know, that's the other thing you do to kill time when you're stuck at home. And uh, there's that Seth Rogen movie that came out, An American Pickle. Did anybody else watch mm -hmm. it or am I the only one? Uh, Elise and I watched most of it, like maybe about half. Okay, so, you know, the, the basic premise is that this dude in like from 100 years ago gets pickled and then in modern day he comes out of the vat and it's like a dude from the past living in uh current times and it's seth rogan plays the old dude and the the, the great grandson anyway uh in that movie the, the the dude from like 100 years ago talks about making pickles with just salt and water and i was like i thought you needed vinegar so i looked it up and apparently that's the way people used to make pickles was with just salt and water no vinegar i was like Oh, well, that seems really easy. If some dumbass from 100 years ago can do it, I can do it. So I decided to make the old way from like 100 years ago with just salt and water and no vinegar. So uh, that's going to taste like shit. Why? <laughs> it's a pickle. It's gonna, they said it's going to taste good. like a wet, salty cucumber. Yeah, I don't no, think you're going to like it, Gus. I think it's going to taste like but a wet, salty I mean, cucumber. I, I put there's some, there's I put, something to be said for, you know, if this is how they did it a hundred years ago we've made excellent strides since then but if it was able to be done a hundred years ago that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best version of the finished product well it'll be a version and we're going to find out in nine days so what does it smell it's, like it's if got, it doesn't smell like vinegar it's got dill and i put some garlic in it so it smells like garlic I feel like I vinegar right is now. a very vital ingredient to the pickle taste to me that is well, the pickle oh, it's the and, catalyst. Uh, you, have, you have to put uh some something with some kind of leaf with tannins in it in order to keep the pickle crispy. And they say you can either use grape leaves, oak leaves, mesquite leaves, or tea leaves. So I put some black tea leaves in there to uh, make them crispy. <laughs> well, if you Salty need any shit poo pickle. water, let me know. I got some to lend you. <laughs> Listen, right, I'm gonna make you, guys, you guys are going to be jealous. You're going to want to eat my pickles. I'm going to be selling them. 
fifteen dollars a pickle at store.roosterteeth.com. Uh, we're gonna have Beacon Claw and Pickle. Uh, we're gonna, it's our new thing. It's right over there. Limited edition Gus Pickles from the Great Pickle Experiment Number One. Pre-order now. I think I I'm gonna that. make. I'm gonna start pickles as well, and I'm gonna make a much superior pickle. Uh, you can only use uh, English cucumbers, though. Can we pickle off? You big. guys. Yes! You guys pickle will. Off. A pickle off, my favorite Dragon Ball Z character. Um, <laughs> Gus will do it with with salt and water and garlic. Gavin, you're gonna do it with vinegar. Barbara, what kind of pickles are you gonna make? I'm gonna make garbage shit water pickles. Shit water pickles. <laughs> Barbara, I'm gonna can you buy take pickles pickle from the seriously? store. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna use. Uh, I'll find a very unconventional method. To James, make it. did you say uh, you're buying them from the store? <laughs> That's yeah, your... yeah, but I'm just gonna pour that. <laughs> I'm gonna pour that, that bottle into what something that looks like Gus's, and then I'm, yeah. we're gonna serve them, and then we're gonna go around and see who wasted the most time. <laughs> but see, ultimately, ultimately, that's what's important during quarantine. It's all about mm -hmm. wasting time. It's like, how time, do you feel? Yeah. There are so many hours in the day. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna make pickles, and I'm gonna watch the bubbles form in that pickle jar, and that's my mm -hmm. entertainment for the next six months until we get a vaccine. I, I want to explode a pickle jar and somehow film it in slow motion. I think the downside there is that I'll have to film a pickle jar for like weeks yeah. on end. Yeah, that's at, a lot of footage. Like a thousand frames a second. Oh my god! <laughs> I, I totally, want to see that timeline. I but totally be... misunderstood what you were doing. I thought you just wanted to explode an existing store bought pickle jar, and I was like, why would that take so long? You just explode. No, because just because Gus was talking about burping them. And, and yeah. I think that would also set the record for the most photographed pickle of all time. Oh, absolutely. So I think that's a double win. Well, yeah. except it wouldn't be a pickle the whole time. Oh, well, because it, it would be, be a pickle by the time. By the Wait, time it explodes, when is though. a pickle a pickle? When mm. does it officially become a pickle? Can Probably we say the, the next day it's a pickle. You think but, after well, one I mean, day in the jar, it's a pickle? Those are cucumbers you would, still. You, you don't think you would taste the difference between that and a cucumber? No, as I'm saying, those are cucumbers. I'm guarantee you that's that that still tastes more cucumber than pickle. I think when you eat I it, think Gus, so. I think Gavin's right. I think it's gonna taste like a watery, salty cucumber. I think the vinegar is probably a very necessary taste well, that you're needing. Because you I, hate well, in, cucumbers. In, in the movie, those pickles were very popular. So if the movie taught me anything, <laughs> it's that people want pickles like that. The movie features a man who survives for a hundred years in a abandoned factory because he was surrounded by pickle juice that that kind of pickle juice yeah so i mean if you were in there i think you'd have a better chance of having good pickles <laughs> just whatever you do once it's ready don't spill it in your tesla <laughs> oh, are you gonna God. go for any other pickled products onions uh, eggs yeah once uh this was just an experiment obviously that with the name the great pickle experiment number one uh yeah. once i learn from this one then uh yeah do some onions some jalapenos uh i don't know some carrots some other stuff you should try pickling too. things that aren't typically pickled cake that's good sure like a, a like a banana well mm. i'll try a banana do you, in the peel or out of the peel out of the peel out of the peel okay pickled yeah. banana we'll try that Maybe I'm going to make it for you. Barbara, you send me a list of stuff you want pickled. I'm going to make a list right now. Barbara's pickles. Bar okay. I'm gonna, Barbara's maybe like pickles. a pickled Snickers or something. Yeah, if I was going to say a pickled Ooh. Oreo, but a Snickers Evan would be. Snickers. I'll put an Oreo in here for Barbara. I don't uh, want them to share the same jar, though, if possible. Oh, obviously not. You have okay, a okay. very, very distinct pickling. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I just I don't can, if my jar could Oreo. actually be at least like an, uh, like 10 feet away from Gavin's jar, that would be great. Can I also get a live webcam feed to, so I can check on the progress? Uh, maybe. I'll have to work on that. I don't, okay. have that. I don't have that ready. I don't have that handy, but I'll, I'll see what I can figure James, out. James, would you like me to add anything for you in my, my pickle jar? Uh, yeah, milk. I, wanna, mm. I want you to pickle some milk. Pickled, pickled milk, all right? Yep, mm. you figure that out. <laughs> I feel like that's just taking existing pickle juice and then mm. pouring milk into it. You could yeah, but it can't milk. combine. It can't combine, right? We want it to pickle the milk. Right. We don't want to just stir the two liquids together. So you're going to have to figure out a way to have the milk in a container that mm. is also <clears throat> pickleable. Right. Pick it's like permeable, so the, the pickling process yeah. can happen. But pickling keep, through osmosis. Yeah. Yeah. The, the pickle, the, the milk needs to stay in there and get pickled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting. We'll figure it out. You, you know how. There's it well in the UK anyway. There's the milkman who just drives around delivering milk mm -hmm. at like six a.m. every morning to everyone. 
Mm-hmm. Do you, okay. that, is that a thing here anywhere, or is that just not in Austin? Um, I'm sure you can find, like, small businesses that'll do that, like, very Because I feel like that, that's, that's, like, old, like, the people don't really yeah. need milk delivered anymore. People aren't as no. big on milk. But there, I feel like there should be a coffee man who just drives around <gasps> with just regular coffees and just leaves them on everyone's doorstep if you sort of opt in. I think that's a big business idea. I think I mean, so, I could, too. I would pay for I would, that. Dr- I would drink coffee that just arrived on my floor every morning if it was on there. On your floor? But Why do you say it be, that way? <laughs> would it be the right temperature? How could you possibly maintain the appropriate temperature of they, coffee I mean, for an they, entire trip? Yeah, they, a hot to keep, <laughs> they managed to keep milk cold, the milkman. I don't so think well, they, no, well, the, they the, did. The reason, the reason is, I is think England is sealed. cold at six in the morning and it's just still cold when you go out to get it usually. But... But I mean, they would still deliver it in the summer. It's fine. Milk can you know sit what out I, for a while. You know what I want to bring back? And if we did bring it back, I want to be an angel investor. Or I can't. I can't afford to be an angel investor in anything. Maybe I'll just work for it. Um, but uh, one of those guys who brought ice around, he had the big claw, like, and oh, he would yeah. get a giant cube, and he'd go, "Here's your ice for the month." And he Why, would wait, put what, it. There. Where does the claw what, to hold it? Cause yeah, because it's yeah. They would have. Have you not seen Ice Men? They no. have these giant, it's basically they have a handle and it has a giant claw on it and then they hook the ice in and then that's how they carry it and <laughs> like they deliver it, they like put a, it in an a ice metal box. foundry or something. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to bring that back. So what was the, per- was that just because ice was more rare? Yeah, well, because there was no refrigeration. It didn't right. exist. So, so the only just... thing you had was a yeah box and he'd go, all right, time to fill up your ice box and he'd just slide that big old, Cuba ice in there and then that's where you I, I guess the only way to store and transport ice back in the day was just to have a lot of ice <laughs> and it's just so cold. <laughs> just by, yeah. by volume yeah. you were able to carry it yeah. when, uh, when I was a kid uh, you know I lived I grew up in a really kind of small town out in the middle of nowhere and there was this service where once every two weeks I think this freezer truck would come by and do home deliveries and he'd come by and he'd be like do you want to buy anything from the freezer truck? And you'd be like, oh, I want ice cream or chicken fried steak or like whatever. Like they the had like Schwann's a man. The Schwann's man. It was the Schwann's delivery. I, the I didn't Schwann's know if that, was a thing, if that was a thing everywhere or if like I was just some weirdo who had that. I, I have a great Schwann's man story. Do you? I do. Yeah. I mean, I always remembered as a kid the Schwann's man coming, but it was like, <laughs> why would you why would you order? It was like over all overpriced. Yeah. But it's like, but you would still always get the catalog. The Schwann's man catalog would arrive. <laughs> what? I rest- look up what you're talking about. I wrestled in high school, and 90% of wrestling is starving yourself to make weight. And Ugh. I would, uh, I would be so hungry that instead of, you know, like an actual teenager looking at Playboy magazines or like pornography or whatever, I would take the Schwann's catalog <laughs> up to my room. <laughs> lie on my bed and I would flip through it and then circle with a marker the things that I wanted to eat when the season would, was over. I would look at it the same way kids look at like lingerie catalogs. Oh my God. And That's I would tragic. flip through and I'd be like chocolate cake and I'd circle it. <laughs> and at the end of the season I would go through it and I would try to find all the items that I want. I was like to order all the schwans. Years so binge. I'm like drooling between the pages. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't drool because I was so dehydrated, but I was <laughs> doing whatever. But your pecs, instead. man. Mm, yeah. Dude, that's yeah. so. I didn't know that about you. That's sad. That makes me sad to think of like a little James just starving himself <laughs> to wrestle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was. Yeah, I was. You know, it, it taught me a lot about. It, it actually changed my relationship with food, um, in a lot of ways. And, uh, Do you still circle things in catalogs? It. No, I have a less healthy relationship. <laughs> we don't talk anymore. And also, Schwann's man, I guess, is gone. I don't think it exists anymore. According to the chat, uh, Gay Millhouse says Tucker Carlson is the is the Schwann's heir. Is that true? Is he <laughs> really? Carlson Schwann's. I thought you How said can that you be an the... heir of something that would have had to have gone bankrupt <laughs> a long time ago? Oh, apparently it's true, according to Eric in chat. He's confirming it for us. Really? Wow. wow. Okay. I like that. Well, I also I, love I, how I that, like that. I'm less interested in Schwann's now. All of a He's sudden. even more rich than I thought. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't like it as much. That no, guy, that guy, Tucker Carlson, that guy's like a full-blown moron. <laughs> he's, he's one of the dumbest people, I think, to ever appear in any sort of media. <laughs> well, he's got me to compete with. True. <laughs> and me. Just, just throwing that out he, there. He's, he's really smart when you think about the fact that he's super rich, and all he ever does is try to appeal to people who don't have money and think that they like really angry people in the you know what middle america or wherever you know like he's he's smart in the sense that he is a sociopath or whatever you want to call it <laughs> there apparently was a video put out i didn't get to watch it yet but it was trending on twitter of uh ben shapiro reading the lyrics to that new song from who was it megan the stallion and is it Nicki minaj or no who was it it's Cardi B, isn't it? Cardi, Cardi B. B. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I got I got mixed up. But yeah, uh, it's apparently him reading the lyrics to that song and just being absolutely disgusted by it, which I think is one of the funniest things ever <laughs> because Ben Shapiro is <laughs> such a imagine, little shit. Imagine it being 2020 and getting upset by lyrics of a song. But lyrics of a song like, by saying that I heard this song accidentally. And it offended mm -hmm. me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. How do you listen to a song accidentally? Yeah, yeah. But it's, it blows my <laughs> mind that we're still dealing with, with people that go like, this song is bad. I'm like, no, we've what? we've moved past that. What, we mean, got we got out of that with poison or whatever in the eighties, Twisted Sister. Like we we've determined that it isn't. It's well, fine. There, there are, be okay. There are definitely um I don't know how to put it. There are definitely people with very strong views about that. Like when I was a kid, I thought the premise of the movie Footloose was ludicrous, right? I thought there's no way that anyone could ever think like that. There's no way that something like that could ever happen. Mm -hmm. But I think back, what is it, two years ago now, after AOC won her congressional seat, and there was that group of people who tried to make a scandal out of the fact that she was in a video dancing when mm -hmm. she was in college. And like they released yeah, this yeah. music video where it's like, oh, look at her. She was dancing in this music mm -hmm. video in college. Like, do you think this is going to make people angry? Like, is this really yeah. what you grasped at? And this She's is the scandal? She's having fun? Yeah, How this is the scandal care? you're running with? A woman, a woman? dancing? <laughs> like, having not even, fun in my not 2020? Even, it wasn't even like a provocative dance or anything. It's like, she was just on a roof spinning around? And this is, the, mm -hmm. this is what you grasped at? Hey, guys, make sure to strike this from my record. Oh, no. Don't run <laughs> for could, office. This could really come back to haunt me. Don't run for office. It's not going to be the shit discussion from earlier, the fact that you killed a cockroach. <laughs> what, what is it? So it's going to be the dancing. There are some things in 2020 where it's like, man, still dealing with that. But is there, do you think there's anything that is, is like way too far beyond where we are? Like something that shouldn't have been invented until like 2050, but we have now. Like, do, you, do, you, do you use anything where you're like, I can't believe this is real? Yeah, every day. I've got it right here. Hold on. This thing. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to pull out your dick. I really did. I, mean, that, <laughs> that I can't believe this is real. it has got some 2050 BDE going on, but uh, this thing. I mean, I'm still amazed by the fact, by the things that uh, we can do with smartphones. Yeah, I feel like to me it was when I first used Wi-Fi and I was typing on MSN on a laptop in my bed. I was like, this is magic. But we'd already landed on the moon like four decades mm -hmm. earlier. So really not... You know, overly impressive when you think well, about that. Well, earlier, earlier in the in the podcast, Gus, you know, half-heartedly mocked uh, people from a hundred years ago for their ability to make pickles poorly, <laughs> um, and said if they can do it, he can do it. I mean, it was only a few thousand years before that where they were like, "Let's figure out the pyramids, let's figure that out," or whatever, <laughs> like these massive True. constructions that I would like to see Gus try. <laughs> but, but that could be our, that could be my new quarantine thing. Gus builds the pyramids. Mm -hmm. You think I can Gus do it the pyramids. before the uh, end of the No, no, I don't think so. <laughs> I just wonder oh. if, if, if the astronauts that went to the moon, I mean, obviously they were excited to go to the moon and they were like doing some hard work up there on the moon. But I wonder if at any point while stood on the moon, they just had a sudden realization where it's just like, this is way beyond our planet's capabilities. We shouldn't be stood on the moon. We should just well, be I mean, looking at the moon. It, I'm like, sure that's they were crazy for the 60s. 
I'm sure that at the time they're like, we're not, you know, we don't know if we're going to make it. We know we're we, <laughs> mm -hmm. like all yeah, of this yeah. has just been, you know, theoretical. I mean, sure. I guess like Apollo, they, they did one pass around the moon where they didn't actually land before they, before they landed. But you know, when they're in the landing module and they're like, no one's done this. I mean, they wrote down some math on a paper back, you know, a couple hundred thousand miles in that direction. And the math on the paper says that this is going to work. But what if someone did, did the math wrong? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like, do you think movies like Apollo 13 is a much better movie because you know it's real? Like, mm. do you think if that was a completely fictional story, that movie would still be as good? Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess there I mean, is that, that element no. of, you know, the, the human spirit and people like, overcoming. Like, like, you watch a movie sometimes, you're like, well, that wouldn't have really happened that way, right? Or it's like, oh, that doesn't seem very realistic. Like, I, I feel like the bit in that movie where they have to switch the thing that they're in and then they have to modify the the carbon dioxide filter yeah from the other one mm -hmm. to work with the this one mm -hmm. and how they they figure that all out with people like using replica products on earth i thought that like i don't think you could write that if you were writing a movie yeah. but the fact but, that they had to quickly do that i was like that is incredible holy that shit is, that is also a great scene where like the the scientist comes into that room in nasa and he like dumps all the gear onto the table and says i need you to make this fit into this using only that <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. and they're like, <laughs> like trying to think okay. of they have a copy of everything they have up there but they're also like well we do, they're gonna have to like use one of their socks for this bit and it's like it's crazy <laughs> i love that movie it's really great apollo 13 i want to rewatch that I, we were just I re talking right before the podcast about like the comfort of rewatching things that you know what's going to happen in it or that you yeah. already know you enjoy just with all this uncertainty and anxiety going on and I think James, you were talking about that, right? Yeah, yeah. We just the the feeling with Netflix and so many of these options and stuff is like, oh, you should always be watch. There's so much to watch. You should always be consuming something new or finishing that show you started or whatever. Like, at least I have these lists of movies we haven't watched that we want to. But more recently, we've been like, no, screw it. Let's watch something that we know is good that we've seen maybe a hundred times. So like last yeah. night, we put on Adam's Family <laughs> Values. Adam's Family Values, um, and we were like. Haven't seen that in a while. No, it's great. Let's put it on. And we were watching it just laughing because it's it's great. It's perfect. You liked, we know uh, it's great. Little pubert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pubert. Yeah. It, it, yeah pubert not... disappeared. He got wiped off the Adams Family canon, by the way. I don't think he showed up in that other movie. Sometimes right? when he, he's bring only up pubert, in values. People don't remember about pubert. That's a shame. It's a real shame. Pubert's, pubert's a gift. I, I'm, I'm definitely a serial rewatcher of things. Like I, mm -hmm. I would much prefer to put on a movie that I've seen a million times than think about starting a new one. Sometimes, like I have to be in the right mood for a new movie or TV show. I think mm -hmm. I'm more mm -hmm. often than not just like I just want to put on something that I know I'll already enjoy, even if yeah. I've seen it. Like five yeah, times. I feel that way. Even if I've got stuff like like good movies have come out and it's like it's time to watch them. It's like yeah, let's watch this new, new movie. Yeah, unless you're in the right mindset, I'm probably going to stick on Base Kit Ball or something. Yeah, yeah. or Love mm -hmm. Island for us. Or Love Island. Uh, real real fast, people, people in chat are saying that, uh, I don't know which is correct or not, people in chat are saying that Tucker Carlson might actually be the heir to Swansons, not Schwans. Oh. No. Okay. Which uh, might, might, okay, might make so a little I can, more sense. I can order my frozen pizzas or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. But it, it's funny, you, you, them. you were saying that thing uh, about watching older movies. Um, I watched that pickle movie, you know, uh, over the weekend. <laughs> and then after it was done, I was like, I want to watch something else. You know, that was like 90 minutes long. And I, uh, I wanted to watch something that I'd seen before. So like I was scrolling around and I saw like Jaws was available on streaming. I was like, oh, I probably haven't seen Jaws in 20 years. Right. You know, that, you know, the movie that created the summer blockbusters and, you know, summer movies being a thing. Uh, so I went back and rewatched it. it like, totally great movie. And mm -hmm. the, the thing I took away from it, though, like I said, I haven't watched it in a long time. Uh, the thing I took away from it, though, is I could not shake the feeling that the first half of that, how uh, applicable the first half of that movie is to the current situation we find ourselves oh, yeah. in. Oh, yeah. With the, the mayor. Like, yeah. yeah. Right. It's like the, the experts and the scientists are telling you there is a danger out there. You need to do something right now to protect the people. But the politicians say, no, don't worry about it. It's fine. Everything's okay. Let the people continue to live their lives, and then all the shit hits the fan. And I was like, "Well, I mean, this was kind of a good escape, still, but now I can't help but feel like it's <laughs> mm -hmm. just an allegory for what we're going through right now. And except yeah. now, we can't go get on a boat and shoot the coronavirus in the mouth." <laughs> Spoiler That's for true. the end of Jaws. 
Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't that be a great way to end this all, though? <laughs> just shooting it in the mouth. <laughs> just say, like, smile, you, you son, son of a bitch. bitch. <laughs> Black. Black like, like a doll's eyes. <laughs> if, if you added together all of the physical mass of the coronavirus, how much space would it take up? Two jaws. Two, two I shots? I mean, being two... that it's a virus, probably not a lot of physical space. Gus, are you one of those people who thinks it's called Jaws because that's the name of the shark? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. That's the name of the shark. It's Jaws. <laughs> oh. Oh no! And here, then, comes, that's, here comes that's why Jaws. In, the, in the second movie, it's Jaws two because they killed Jaws in the first movie. So then, what do you get? <laughs> it's the second Jaws. It's Jaws two. That's the shark. Uh huh. Sure thing. And why do they why do they call the third one Jaws three D? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we, we, have, we don't have time for that uh, discourse right now. There was a girl in my high school whose nickname was Jaws. Just gonna put that out there. Could she fit three Ds uh... in there? No. She just mm. was very jaw-y while doing certain things, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know what no, you're talking I don't. about. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, what is that? Is that hands. eating a pickle? Yes. Yeah. She liked pickles? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, that doesn't seem so bad. Seem doesn't seem like she deserved that nickname at all. <laughs> 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 this episode of the Receipt Podcast is brought to you by Lumen Skin. I've got a pretty busy routine, I'll admit. Sometimes I overlook things. I wake up, shower, brush my teeth, and I'm sitting at my desk working, but I always overlook skincare. And here's the cold hard truth, guys. Your skin has needs. Uh, if you want to look as good as possible for as long as possible, you need to address them now. And we get it. You might not know where to start, but there's a company that's taken all the guesswork out for you, and that company is Lumen. Uh, Lumen is on a mission to give men the amazing skin they deserve through high-quality, expert-created products delivered right to your door. And all of their products are formulated specifically for men's skin and made to target skin issues with maximum efficiency using top-notch ingredients like charcoal, green tea extract, and vitamin C. And it's not just about looking good. It's about feeling good. You need good skin health, especially as you get older, to prevent long-term damage. Uh, I've, you know, I've noticed I have dry skin patches. Uh, I've been trying out Solumen Skin products. It's super easy to apply and start having healthier skin. You can see some results pretty quickly. And even if you have no idea where to begin, Lumen makes it so easy to find the right skin management system for you. You can choose from different skin, skin concerns to address or just pick a simple starter pack for free. Uh, you deserve to look and feel your best, and here's where you start. Go to lumenskin.com slash rooster to get a one-month free trial of everything you need to start your skincare journey at home. That's lumenskin.com slash rooster to get your first month free. Lumenskin.com slash rooster. <laughs> Do you have a thing that you remember from, like, being a child where your, your parents' generation would universally complain about the same thing all the time? For me, it was... I feel like every one of my parents' generation would complain about how early Christmas decorations showed up in shops. <laughs> if it was like beginning of October. All of the old people would be like, can't believe it. It's getting earlier each year. It's Christmas decorations <laughs> up. It's not even Halloween yet. Dude, put and it that, up that's now. That's been like a constant throughout my life. Do you have anything like that? Man, that's a good um, question. I feel like I, I, if I thought about it for a while, I would definitely come up with something. If, well, I feel like every generation complains. It's, it's something we already kind of talked about, that music is getting raunchier and that the next generation is going to is no good and not working and doesn't adhere to the same values as the previous generation and they're going to run the world into the ground. When in reality, it's the old people doing it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're going to... Th I think there is a technological divide, though, that we're going to have to deal with at some point. Because like that Christmas stuff is the same thing as boy, this is sure is fun watching the pickles burp, right? Like it's because people had time and nothing better going on. We are yeah. overloaded with stimulus right now. And I feel like the kind of stuff we're going to say is like <laughs> those TikToks are too short. I can't <laughs> like I cannot convey my memes in only 15 seconds it's not enough time like that's what but the but the younger generations are gonna go get out of here old man six <laughs> seconds is plenty to meme you know like that's what it's gonna be 240 frames or less yeah <laughs> i'll complain Other than that i have nothing to complain about i have nothing to complain i try not to i i do i actually do the assessment a lot where i go am i just becoming an old man <clears throat> Because I don't, I don't ever want to be the kind of person that looks on to the next generation and goes and shakes his fist, like, because that's how it always goes. And I would hate to be that stereotype. I'm jealous of you know? our next generation. Like, I guess it would be Gen Z is the one below us. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so jealous of them. They're so creative, so funny, and also I don't remember anyone I knew when I was like 14 or 15 being that good looking. And now all the kids 
who are that age somehow are like all they're all supermodels and they're all like so well dressed and they're make they know how to do their makeup from the age of like nine and it just i don't understand how it happened but i'm so jealous that that wasn't my generation (laughs) yeah i think they have more information to gain that like i think Mm -hmm. they're learning more i think younger generations have access to more information and it sucks because the educational system isn't probably what at least in america isn't what it should be but the good thing is that there's a whole nother world of education that they're pulling from that being said the ice caps are melting so they'll have nothing left uh (laughs) they're going to be incredibly smart super creative just stunning but they're all going to be dead because of heat death i I just feel like the the gen z stuff the gen z stuff you were talking about barbara is mainly because it's easier to create and post stuff for that generation than it was yeah like like you used to make videos but it involved like you had to upload it and then post it on a website that you know not many people yeah it's like now all the tools i guess are are like at their fingertips and also that that generation grew up using these social media platforms and so like what do we say greatest thing from the future it's true (laughs) I, I like that it's it's never compared to a pocket watch. Like I feel like you should have a chain for your iPhone so you can like pop it in a pocket like an old school pocket watch. That, yeah, you, do they not have that like a case that you can put on where like at the bottom <laughs> there's like a loop you can attach a chain to? And it's just in a big circle that opens up. <laughs> I like the concept of the pocket watch and chain because it in of in and of itself is like failure. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> why is it failing? <laughs> like it feels like that at the time of the pocket watch, the ability to put it somewhere better existed. <laughs> like, well, to, because your to wrist mount it to yourself existed. in a better way. Yeah. Your wrist existed like, before Leather straps, things. like all these things existed beforehand, but no one put it together, or, or at least there was some lone holdout who said, a watch on my wrist? No, thank you. I'll keep it in my pocket. <laughs> Except every single time he ter- leaned at more than uh 85 degrees it fell out and onto the ground so he was like aha i know how to overcome this problem by chaining it to my body it is all then... backwards isn't it yeah well not only chaining it to his body but then putting the metal cover over the glass so that when never oh, yeah, yeah. it does fall out the glass <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah. shatter it is it is the culmination of so many failures it, it, are there any wrist watches that have the metal cover just for like old time's sake there <laughs> like, should you be. really don't want to scuff it <laughs> Do you I think mean, some, Apple, some... Apple will make a pocket watch? Like, instead of the Apple watch, we'll have the Apple pocket watch, and it'll okay. cost like $3,000. You have to buy that like a the... special clip to clip it on, too. It's like an extra feature that you have to I buy. I think that would be the douchiest thing that could ever be invented in our entire mm-hmm. lifetime. That's, an that's Apple, the Apple pocket, pocket watch. watch on a Dude, we're going to be looking sell, like, back gangbusters. in like three years from now, watching this moment on the podcast. We're like, that's so fucking dumb. All of us are going to have it. Every you single got, one of us. You got Johnny Ive like with his little chain and watch like. <laughs> it's magical. it's like that podcast we posted. Mm-hmm. I want to say in like 2012, maybe where we were talking about what's the mm-hmm. word for a picture of yourself, and I think one person said selfie, and we're like, that's fucking stupid. That's not going to catch on. What is that? And then yeah, I remember misunderstanding is. like the etymology of selfie because it was talking about like phones and stuff. I I thought it was like a cell phone e. Like that kind of stuff, but not like yourself. So I was, I was super confused. I never thought of it that way. That's really stupid, Gavin. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> dumb. But it was the first time I'd heard selfie. Yeah. It's crazy how much it took off since then. Now, I, uh, does anyone else selfie. feel like if someone, if this like only generally ever happens at RTX or something like that, but like when someone's like, hey, can we take a selfie? You're like, but I'm going to be in it too. So mm. it will not the be. The greatest is when someone asked <laughs> if I could take a selfie of you. And I was like, well, then it's that's just yeah, a picture an, of me. That's a picture <laughs> a of me using already. the worst camera. <laughs> I just like the idea, James, of you just trying to like remain loyal to the word and like ducking out of everyone's selfies. Yeah, yeah. So it is just say, them. I go, I go, you get back in line. You come up and you ask for an USB or whatever. <laughs> that's what I want. A weeby. A weeby. Yeah. Weeb. Oh, I like that. That's a good one. Yeah, I don't know. You should trademark that, Barbara. Yeah. Hey, could I? Hey, Gavin. Uh, big fan. Do you mind if I get a weeby with you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds so dumb. Let's do it. <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> Would you like even more people in this weeby? Yeah. Because we can put as many as we want. A wee. <laughs> there is be. no limit on we. It's true. Yes. 
Could take did did they take a picture. selfie on the moon? A wee bee? A no. I don't know. I, I, so I was speaking of the moon and speaking of photos on the moon. <laughs> I, I guess thinking about it now, I guess I was a little shit when I was a kid, but, uh, we, it was in some sort of science class or something. And we were discussing the moon landing and landing on the moon when I was probably 10 or something like that. And the teacher showed us like photos of it and stuff. And they were like, and Neil Armstrong, he was the first man on the moon. And I was like, then who's holding the camera? <laughs> <laughs> How'd they get the shot then? I feel like they must have sent someone out there to go film that, right? And they're like, I don't know. But I know that they were being nice because the right answer is probably a poll. Or right. like, you know, like <laughs> yeah. something that wouldn't be exposed to the uh, lack of atmosphere in space. There, there was a time, I guess, where everyone on Earth had had their picture taken by Neil Armstrong. Right, because he was oh, in a photo yes. for the entire world. Well, not everyone. Yeah. Why not everyone? Half, maybe. Not half People on the other world. side? Yeah. I mean, that's still... A photo of the whole Earth. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's, that's true. I like well, moon have... rovers as a concept. <laughs> Sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> I was moving on to moon rovers. I like moon rovers as a concept because human beings got to the moon and they said, I'm not walking. <laughs> <laughs> you kidding me? <laughs> We drove all the way oh, up thank here. Thank you. Yeah, build me a car. <laughs> we, you see how far away that is? That we crater? We flew 240,000 miles to get no here, way. but now we're going to drive. That's like the person that parks at the, the closest base to the gym. I mean, no one parks <laughs> in the gym anymore because gyms are closed. But it's like, <laughs> like, you're like, you're going to the gym. Why do you have to park close? Everyone should be parked away. <laughs> you don't want to work out before your workout, though. Yeah, warm up. It's cool up. Warm I, up. yeah. That's nice, because then you get a little bit of, yeah, it's like cool down, too, walking back out to your car. You don't yeah, just get right in and drive home. I mean, unless it's, gym? like, rainy or something. Do I miss the gym? What kind of a question is that? Well, I, have I don't know what you've done, in like, in the, in the meantime. Like, have you set up anything at your place, or do you have, like, access to any equipment at all? When things, so when things started looking like they were getting real bad. So end of February, I, I would say, is when we was like, hmm, something's going to happen here. This is not going to be resolved as quickly as we think. And uh, I, the, is a, Elise was buying supplies. Elise was like, we're going to get toilet paper. We're going to get supplies. We're going to get you know things that we need in case things get real bad. And I said, uh-huh. And I bought a pull-up bar, um, <laughs> the kind that you can put in a doorway. I basically bought a pull-up bar and resistance bands. Um, and I have only had access to that since March. As someone um, who has never used or owned a pull-up bar, the only times mm -hmm. I've seen them are in videos where people like pull them down into their own faces. Has that ever happened <laughs> to you? No, it's weird. It's a physics thing. Somehow pull-up bars are, they can't, you have to really do something wrong with it. I feel like the door frame has them to break. Fall. Like, because yeah, your, like your the weight, door frame like, is like, yeah, your weight puts pressure on the brace point. Yeah, it's so the like door frame around, would have to go. Right? Yeah, but but door frames should theoretically in a safely built should. home be one of the strongest sections of the home, so it shouldn't collapse. So you'd really have to do something wrong for it to fall. But like people that swing on it, like as soon as you, as soon as that downward force stops existing, then it does become more vulnerable. So. But I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that. many how people pull them down so much. I feel like maybe they're cheap ones that you kind of like shower curtain rod between a door frame. And oh yeah, they don't they don't stay in place. Yeah, the one I have is like it's a wedge, so like it has like a hook that goes around and that attaches to the the door, the top of the door on the other side, and then it it sweeps around and has these things that attach to the door frame on the inside. So those those when you pull down on it, push together and basically yeah. create like a sandwich effect. Um, do, do you have so, any yeah. entertainment going? Like, have you like glued an iPad to the top of your pull-up so you can watch shit while you're up there? No, so, I briefly. do. I have a uh, Surface Go, and so I will sometimes put like music uh, or like a YouTube video on the Surface Go. But I mean, we are we are in a one bedroom, Elise and I, so I will just be in the hallway that leads to our bedroom, <laughs> like, and she's just sitting there watching a movie, and so then I'll just like have the surface go or something on the coffee table in front of me because that's where the space is. And I'll be like, all right, I'm going to be doing push ups for the next 45 minutes. And then she puts headphones on and has to <laughs> bear with my has grunts it been for that time. Tough, like living in a smaller space with both of you. 
I've been wondering how that's been for like, oh, yeah. people living in small spaces. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been tough. Not I don't think it's not because of each other. Right. Honestly, the working from home thing is the hardest because this is our kitchen. We're in our kitchen right now. So like, uh, yeah. you know, we were talking <laughs> earlier before we started. Gus was like, what's that noise? I was like, at least throwing away trash. It's two <laughs> feet away from me. Like, <laughs> our, our kitchen trash can is right there. Like we yeah. don't have anywhere else to put mm. stuff. And then since we also make content together, it's tough because we're not far enough away that we can have headphones. So we like we'll use Discord to communicate, but we have to mute each other on Discord and then do like the off ear thing to be able to hear each other. Oh, yeah. And then so like there's a lot of weird things. And if she's ever needed to film something, then I can't do something at the same time. Or one of us will have to like go sit on the toilet with a laptop to take a meeting. <laughs> um, but that's, 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 those aren't burdens that we put on each other. It's just the the problem the situation, is having so yeah. little space. Yeah. 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 I was wondering how, what you guys were doing, especially for working out. Cause I know you guys are very like fitness focused. Have you <laughs> heard about or picked up the ring fit at all? I haven't. Uh, they like sold out like crazy. Um, and I managed to find one on yeah. Amazon, like pretty recently, like within the last <laughs> month. So I don't mm -hmm. know if you've checked there. It was pretty, it, I don't know if it was more expensive than what it normally costs. I think it was like $120 for the whole thing. Mm hmm. That might have been more expensive. Do you feel than like? Do you feel like it? It works. Oh, dude, it's. Uh, I'm in a really stupid predicament where I broke my toe walking past a table, and my mm -hmm. toe got hooked on it, and it's been, uh, like unusable for the last two weeks. I guess because it's broken, it'll take four to six weeks to heal. But there's like you could customize a workout plan. You could do the game. There's like so many different options, and like you get a fucking good workout from it. Like it targets mm -hmm. all the muscles, and they have different workouts for each muscle group and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised how how much you could do with that ring the, thing, my Bob. The big thing that kills me is that going to the gym was like my therapeutic yeah. like escape. Like I totally I was the that. kind of person who generally would go on my lunch break because um, our office was pretty close to a gym, and so I would go on my lunch break and work out. And it just allows you to like break up your day and get away from things, and you know you can't have your computer right inches away and like you just mm -hmm. can't interact with things it forces you to disconnect focus on this other specific goal and then you'll feel better afterwards because of endorphins or whatever and then afterwards you can then get back into your job and so it yeah. provides you that reprieve but doing it here it does i don't get that at all it feels way more like work um working out but i just i forced a routine on myself so that i have to keep it up so I want to eventually like find whatever that thing is where you actually enjoy working out. I'm not sure how much you have to work out before you get... Five weeks. Five weeks? Five weeks is, is, is generally the estimate. If you go three times a, a week for about five weeks is when approximately your brain, most brains kick in and say, okay, this is something we'll release endorphins for. So it's everyone is for like yeah. five weeks away from being a gym person and they just don't know it? From at least not thinking it's a miserable experience. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's yeah. why I, I say to a lot of people, they're like, I, I'm thinking about working out. And I will say, you know, everyone says, start tomorrow. Why start next week when you can start tomorrow? I don't think tomorrow is a good time to start if you're going on vacation in two <clears> weeks. Right. Um, it's it's when yeah. you could be consistent about it and have a yeah, consistent if you, thing. I say the best time to start is when you have at least a five or six week runway of you knowing that you can do it consistently for that time, because that's when you're actually going to break through into actually understanding what the purpose of this is. It's not just going to be torturing yourself or, you know, it's not going to be misery after that. Because I don't yeah, even so. like, I, like, like Meg got into running, like she enjoys running. Mm -hmm. Just I don't think I'll ever that. be that person. And I, I sometimes yeah. like go for a, a run with her, but it's like, I am miserable after like 10 minutes just because it's like, I hate everything that's happening to my body right now. I <laughs> every, time I, running. every time I hear people who pick up running and they're like, I hated running, I, I hated doing it, I never liked it. And then I just like tried to be consistent about it and now I love it. And I'm, I try to think like, maybe that could be me someday if I just get really serious about it. And then I'm like, I fucking hate it. Every time I even try to run, I'm miserable. <laughs> and I'm like, I never want to do this again. It's like when you drink mm -hmm. too much and you're like, I'm never drinking again, I'm done. That's like me and running. It's mm -hmm. like, I'm never trying this again. And so I don't know if those people are liars or if they're like, well, into something that I think can't about get. alcoholics. 
That's mm. the flip side of it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Runners are the are the cardio alcoholics. They the just didn't stop after like, that I'm doing first. This all the time. Yeah, that You're first bender, they were they away. didn't let it stop them. Yeah, yeah. Don't be an alcoholic today <laughs> or tomorrow. Start when you know you have five weeks that can totally ruin your life. When you can get shit faced for fifteen times over the course of five yeah. weeks, then you're set. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, people in the chat too are saying give it five weeks for the running too. But like, man, I even thinking about running a couple times a week for five weeks makes me sad. The, here's the beauty of exercise. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to get the benefits yeah. of it, right? There's like ring fit is exercise and I don't run, um, but I have pretty okay cardio because of how I exercise in the ways I actually enjoy. I love rowing. Um, I haven't, yeah. I haven't been to a gym and I can't fit a rower here, but like, I, if I could, I would buy a rower because I, I love rowing. You um, can probably fit and, one and, right between your chair and Elise's chair. Just like right yeah. maybe, that Yeah, channel. it folds up and then it would go back down again. There's a guy, there's a guy that lives, uh, there's a bunch of apartments around here and on his balcony is a rower. So I'll see him out there, but it's the only thing that can fit on his balcony. Like he can't sit out there and like, and like hang out or like talk on the phone or whatever. I mean, I would see that as a more functional. I mean, what 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 people? How much time are people spending on their balconies? Like I, half an I hour spend a week. A, Elise and I spend a lot of time on our balcony because we can't go out, right? And we have no other space. It's like, like our I guess, only. I guess yeah. If, if there's no like easy yeah. backyard or park nearby, yeah. But you guys, mm -hmm. you guys walk Benson and stuff at least, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, you get out. Yeah, yeah. We go out to walk Benson and stuff, but I'm saying like in terms of just like in our living space, like escaping yeah. our living living space. Yeah. It's crazy. I used to live in an apartment that had no balcony or like outside area, and I felt so claustrophobic in there. I can't mm -hmm. imagine like, especially in places like New York City, when everything was really bad, the people living in apartments that had like the tiny 200 square foot apartment where you have no mm -hmm. outdoor area or mm -hmm. anything like that, and anywhere you go has access to other people. Like that would... I, power to those people, man. I don't think I could handle that. Well, they're also paying like $5,200 a month in rent <laughs> yeah. so they can go to the coffee shop that they can see from their window but is closed. <laughs> <laughs> like, so this, yeah, they get none of the benefit. Yeah. Man, yeah. yeah that's that's what it suck. is. So it's even worse. It's terrible. Yeah. Been, a, lot, been, a lot of people in chat on a balcony right now. Fair I've, been, I, I've been trying to spend more time on my balcony. I think lately I've been spending... Uh, between like 30, 45 minutes a day sitting outside. It's tough because it's so fucking hot right now. But uh, mm -hmm. I've been trying to make a conscious effort. Uh, we were talking before the podcast. And one of the reasons that I was um, messing with my planners the other day was I've been trying to get small things done around the house just to have like a sense of accomplishment. And one of the things that I got done was like cleaning out my patio, putting some <clears> furniture <throat> out there and trying to make it like a nice space where I would want to sit down uh, for a little while. So because I put all that work in, now I'm like, well, now I fucking have to sit out there. Otherwise, I did all that work for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, mm -hmm. Just because, like, I already invested the time. I invested money in a couple of chairs and a table out there. I'm going to fucking sit out there. Otherwise, I did all of that for nothing. Mm -hmm. It is expensive to to enjoy an outdoor space. Like, the, mm -hmm. in, the one time I had, a, like, a backyard that I could use and sit out in. It's so much money to furnish an outdoor area. I guess because it has to survive the elements but it just yeah. made me not want to have one i was just like i'm just gonna <laughs> sit and look out the window trevor and i ended up buying when we um started like putting furniture outside we're like let's just buy the cheapest stuff that's still comfortable that way we could see how much we actually use this outdoor space and eventually down the line a couple years later get some like nicer outdoor furniture that we actually like and it's like we're not using that space much, but I don't know if it's because the furniture sucks or if we just saying, don't it's, use it. It's just a bunch of inflatable chairs and things <laughs> yeah. shaped like hands. <laughs> yeah, so the reason for not using the space is because it's uncomfortable. <laughs> it's yeah, like, nice. so it's like, what? how do we fix this here? But no, Gus, I need to be better about that. I, I think I've talked about it before, how I don't think I'm getting nearly enough sun uh, as I should be. And I, I don't know if that's affecting my mental health. I actually... For the first time, I know I've like preached it a thousand times, especially on Always Open, but I finally uh, signed up for therapy recently oh, because nice. I realized that like, I, Congrats. I, thank you. I feel like I'm pretty strong mentally most of the time, but this I think is wearing on me more than I realized. And I was like, you know what? Let me just talk to someone. 
see, even if just having that person to <clears throat> talk about my problems to and give me advice or whatever it is helps in any way. So mm -hmm. started down that path. We'll see how it goes. I, I'm not yeah, sure I, if it's I for feel me, like, but I feel like you don't even need to wait until you have a problem. It's I, I feel like it's just such a great idea to potentially just look at the way you live in a slightly different way. Like obviously you can you can see and adapt mm -hmm. to how your friends and family live and it's like, oh, you know, and then you sort of sculpt how you live, but you're never really um, immensely open to completely changing a mindset or a any sort of trait what? until you talk to someone who does that professionally. Yeah, well, it's yeah. good to have that outside opinion. Uh, I also started recently, Barbara, uh, and it, it was interesting because it's like, like, I just want to like talk and bounce ideas off of someone. And then like after, a while it gets to a point where like when i know an appointment's coming up i'm like i don't even have, feel like i have anything to talk about i don't know what's gonna what we're gonna like what am i gonna talk about with this this person for an hour and then like the session comes it's like an hour just flies by it's like oh yeah i guess yeah. i did I, I did have a lot of shit mm -hmm. to talk about it's like oh I, I just i guess what like you don't think about it you just internalize everything and then when there's someone there like pulling at the threads and uh, making you question the decisions you make it's like oh well i guess i really need to dig into that and i really need to think about that a lot more and uh, it's been it's been an interesting experience so far i've only, yeah, it's I've also, only been doing it a little over a month i think it's also mm -hmm. just been nice like this morning i was supposed to have a call and i something came up so i had to cancel but he still messaged me and to be like hey i just want to check in on you like making sure you're not putting too much pressure on yourself because like in our first session i talked about like how i have issues with that and i, I put a lot of pressure on myself and i get down on myself a lot and um I tend to take on too much for myself and other people and just having someone like remind you of that who and like the people my friends and my relationship like people are great about supporting me and I feel extremely supported and loved in my life but it's nice to have like a outside person who's not mm -hmm. necessarily part of your life remind you of those things yeah. uh yeah it's just I, I think everyone should try it at least some I, point I'd say I'd say one thing too I mean it's it's like if you are not <clears throat> feeling it it might be the therapist. Like, right. I think, I think the practice of therapy is pr like, there is a therapist out there who will be the perfect fit, like, like the perfect shoe or a, a sisterhood of traveling pants. Like, and it's, it's okay to say to a therapist, like to say, I don't, I'm not jiving with this, not because therapy isn't for me. Um, but because this therapist isn't for me and it doesn't mean that they're a bad therapist or anything. It's just whatever, mm -hmm they're kind of how they're vibing with you isn't the same vibe. And so yeah. I would say like, like you shouldn't just write it off. If you, if you go down the road with this person and you just don't feel like things are working, it might just be that there's someone else. I also, I also was doing therapy earlier this year and then had to stop cause like, I can't afford this, <laughs> which sucks. Um, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> uh, there, I mean, there's other avenues you can go. I know there's, there's, you know, tell, teletherapy and stuff like that that you can do as well but it's I, also I, everything happened the world ended and then i was like i have other things that i guess i need to handle yeah. first which is maybe a bad i, I, I feel like approach. it's also important to like find the right time for you to do it like i did a few before i went to work and i would arrive at work like completely exhausted and it would be like mm -hmm. 10 a.m and i'd be like yeah, okay, that's I, something need, that I need to someone, do these in the afternoon or something someone mm. described it really interesting to be where they said they're going to therapy is almost like going in for a workout where during it you will feel really exhausted and, and maybe in pain or just stressed out but then once it once it's over you feel better you could still feel exhausted and really kind of like burnt out because of it because it's you're there's so much going on it's such a mentally taxing and emotionally taxing experience for some people not everybody i'm not trying to blanket statement what therapy is like but that it could really be like a workout but like in the end, it will be good for you to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I started doing it for something very specific and then I came away from it thinking I should have just done this in general much earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, P I see people uh, in chat are talking about it and uh, like they're, they're, people in chat are actually being really nice to each other. And some people are suggesting to each other that you, you can look through your insurance provider for people that maybe you can talk to that are covered by your insurance which I, yeah. I think is something that uh, that people maybe don't realize. I think some of the people here in chat didn't realize that until uh, other people were pointing that out to them. So yeah, I mean, don't forget to check. Uh, you might have resources available to you through your insurance 
that yeah. can uh, that can help uh, match you up with someone that make it make it uh, much more affordable hopefully yeah my, my mistake was that oh, i was like oh, i just want to test this out and then i found a therapist and i was like this this person is amazing she's wonderful she's amazing i also really like meditation i've always wanted to make meditation yes. part of my routine and i am really bad at it i need to be better but when i do it i i, I truly love it and so that was also integrated into the therapy sessions and i was like i love this therapist but she was expensive and not covered uh, mm, by mm. health insurance. And so I did the math on how much it would cost to see her like twice a month for the whole year. And I was like, I can't afford that. And yeah. so it, it sucks. But, you know, I, I need to do the work because I know that she isn't the only option. Mm. But yeah, yeah, it's it, it kind of sucks. I wish it was easier to find someone because honestly, like when you do go through your insurance, I don't know about everyone's specific insurance i know with our insurance like you go through this website and you're just like just having to sort through like all of these different people like i have no idea who what i'm mm -hmm. looking for it's like just just like a giant list of names and phone numbers like then yeah. having to like dig through it and be like who's the the right person to talk to it's, I actually, it's just kind of a pain in the ass i didn't realize mm -hmm. you could go through rooster teeth for this so i might revisit that idea <laughs> uh, someone's, someone's getting used... fired I just used uh, BetterHelp, which for, for mm. those of you looking for something kind mm -hmm. of like quick, it's it's an app you get on your phone. There's a website for it. Like you could do text chats. There's like journaling you could do. It's like a whole online resource that you could use. You could set up phone calls. You could set up video calls, et cetera, with your therapist. You could sort through and, and read people's bios. And so you could pick a person or cha change your therapist whenever you feel like you need to. There's no pressure to stick with the person that you're assigned to. But... I knowing that the company does it, I might have to revisit that. <laughs> <laughs> I found it honestly just nerve wracking to get started because it's like, there's like a weird stigma around it that I think is getting better overall. But it, I was, it, yeah, I felt myself like, I kind of don't want to pe tell people I'm doing it, but I guess it's, like, people should know I'm doing it. It was weird. I, I just kind of like secretly started doing it. But then once mm -hmm. I started, it was fine. But I that's think it's mm -hmm. completely up to, I don't think there's you should feel any pressure to tell people or not tell people. I think it's completely up to you. But I do think it's important that people realize there shouldn't be a stigma around seeing a therapist or needing therapy or wanting therapy. Because do you I feel think, like there still is there? I feel like it's getting a lot better. I think there's still probably this idea that like, oh, I only need therapy if I'm depressed or I only need therapy if I've been through something really traumatic. And I don't think that's the case. I think it's more understanding how therapy could benefit really everybody. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't. I, don't I guess it's not really much as a stigma, just a misunderstanding. I I think there's there's a vibe too of it because it you know in a lot of ways it feels like it's a self improvement, right? Ideally, that's what it'll end up being is is you working on yourself. And I know for me, when I started, I was like, okay, well, I'm not really going to say anything or talk about mm -hmm. this other than with the people I'm closest with, because it feels like that's like telling someone like, I'm, so I decided to write a novel, you know, like <laughs> yeah, I've decided yeah. to embark on this, you know, project. And so, you know, but it's never going to be done. You're always going to be able to improve yourself and be a better person and know yourself better. So it seems silly to think of it that way. But for me, that's how it felt. It was like, this is a project. And if I tell people this now, then I'm already getting the reward of having done it without having done it. Right. But then I also don't want, I, I don't want to add to the stigma that therapy is bad. Right. Um, so I, it's, for me, it was a weird line to, to ride, but. I guess that the, I, the misunderstanding that still exists is if, if you say to someone like, oh, I've started seeing a therapist, the instant thing is to go, oh, what, what's wrong? Or like, what are you dealing with? And it's like, well, that's not mm -hmm. necessarily the reason you're going to a therapist. So I think maybe that's the stigma that I'm thinking. The, the human condition. I'm, I'm yeah. learning to, <laughs> yeah, to yeah, deal yeah. with that. Like the, Someone the, threw dog shit in <laughs> my trash can and it was filled with water. <laughs> Floating hot, like, wet dog shit. It's like and a now all soup. I want to do is murder. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's it? like, ulti ultimately it's like, uh, I, why, why are you seeing a therapist? I'm seeing a therapist because over the course of several hundred thousand years, some animals learned how to 
cook meat on a fire and it made their brains bigger <laughs> and it made them start thinking more. And now mm -hmm. all you do is you have this giant organ that you move around through your fleshy body and it just never shuts up. Uh, also, and by the way, those those early human beings spent most of their time around the fire assuming that they were going to close their eyes for two seconds and then be mauled by a bear and, <laughs> or, 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 or a rock was going to fall on them or the sky was going to open up and just, just eviscerate them in an instant. And we still have those brains. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, so... It's, it's, it's yeah, it's it's, it's 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 uh it's weird to think that we still have those brains, right? You still have all those very primal thoughts kicking around inside oh, yeah. your brain in this modern world with you, uh, dog shit water. Yeah. You gotta look up your brain because, as James said, it's in the top three of most top important three. organs, along with the top anus three. and uh, what was number? Yeah. I eyeball. The eyeball. The eyeball. The eyeball. What about the heart? But we we've, no, we've replaced the heart. We've re we've managed to build. <laughs> replacements for hearts and you can also basically take any large animal's heart and throw it in your body i you i know? read a, well i, I should say i read <laughs> esther showed me this this uh this thing she read on reddit yesterday i think it was where um someone talked about a person who it was this woman i want to say she was in her late 20s who was tired so she laid down to take a nap and she died and uh when they did an autopsy on her they realized that she had some condition where her some of her heart muscle cells had started instead of being replaced by heart muscle cells they had been formed by fat cells Jeez. and like over time more and more of her heart was being replaced by fat cells instead of heart muscle cells and it got to a point where 50 percent of her heart was fat just like fat oh and my God, uh, dude. It, it just couldn't pump anymore like the remaining muscle wasn't enough to power the whole heart so like she just died because uh this had slowly taken over and there was no way for them to realize that this was happening. And apparently it's like this super rare condition that can happen that obviously is fatal if you don't catch it, if you don't find a baboon heart to throw in there in time. <laughs> That's a really yeah. unfortunate muscle to suddenly turn to fat. Yeah. <laughs> like the, like a... the, the tongue would be bad, but you could probably live with it. Well, you probably notice if your tongue muscle, if your tongue cells were being replaced nom, by nom, fat cells nom, nom, pretty nom, quickly. Nom. Yeah. <laughs> Just Why nom. does everything taste so greasy? <laughs> all right well it's uh it's about time for us to wrap up here we got to go so that uh we can have our next show uh take off here on rttv uh but i want to say thank you to everybody for watching thanks to everybody who's on the show right now uh and uh we'll see you guys again next week bye bye, bye. bye.